And one of these characteristics of this is that people from different places do things in different ways and work coordinated at national level. And security is one aspect of it. And so we started living that way. Now, unfortunately, at the time they were laying the foundation for federalism, especially as it required regards the security sector, they did not put in place the proper checks and balances. Like every other thing human, it started, it started being abused. Those policies at the sub-regional level were abused, especially in 1963 and 1964 elections. And so when the army came in 1966, it's one of the major concerns that, look, we cannot continue this sub-national police because it was being abused by politicians at that level. They use it to chase their political opponents. You remember I said we run away from our problem instead of resolving it. So what did they do? They now set up a committee to look at the gamut of the issues around the subnational police. So by the time the, police, the report came out, it really had been assassinated. Remember that part of the issues or concerns people had about the U.S. government was that he was trying to unify the country into a unitary system of government, thereby running away from the federal system of all agreed. So, but when that report came out on the issue of uh, policing, the Gowan government that was accusing Irosi of a unity system of government adopted the report of that committee, which is saying that we should do away with all sub national police and have a centralized police. Mm -hmm. That is the beginning of our problem. Thereafter, we start having armed robbery, kidnapping, non terrorism. And it's going to get worse if we don't do the correcting. So, what I'm, point I'm making there for is that if you're running this federal structure, it's, as I say, it comes with some characteristics. As regards the security sector, what we need to do is to decentralize the police in such a way that there will be a policeman at every point, at every corner. If you go to Europe, especially in Germany, one out of every five persons you meet on the street is a security person. That doesn't happen here. So if you have 300,000 policemen to take care of the population of Nigeria, let's say it's 200 million. So how is that going to work? Because I see, I, I think I'm looking at just, mm -hmm. just the protection of life sample. I'm not talking about investigation and detection mm -hmm. of crime, mm -hmm. which is a devil and a kettle of fish. Because if you are a policeman and so you're assigned to, to uh, investigate a case in Enugu, for instance, and uh, two months after you started the thing, you are transferred to Kano, you know what happened to that matter? It's gone. Or you send somebody from Cross River to go to Sokoto to go and do his police. He doesn't have to speak the language, doesn't know the culture, nothing. He doesn't even know the road. Or you send someone to go to Benue to go and quell uh, uh, insurgents in, K in, in the Benue. He doesn't know the route. You're talking of Zambisa Forest. People will live there. But if you send a soldier there, he can't find his way. Uh, Senator, so these are issues. You've clearly laid the foundation. Mm. But I, I just want to be very clear here. You know, wh when we talk about state police, what iteration are we talking about? I mean, what ultimately, what will it look like? What would the role of, say, a governor be in the establishment of that uh, state police force, for example? Look, we're not trying to reinvent anywhere. First, we have, it's been done in Nigeria before. Secondly, it's been done all over the world. Nigeria is the only country in this world, mark my words, the only country in this world that runs a federal system with a unitary police system. There's no other country. Even countries such as UK that has a unitary system of government, they run a federal, a federal system of policing. So what we need to do is to put proper things in check to ensure that this is not being abused. How do we do that? You know, today, if you're conversant with the structure of the judiciary, I'm sure you know what to call the NJC, Nigerian Judicial Council. Very well. it's what, Nigeria is one of the few countries with that. And it's unique, and it's happened. What that means is that we have an authority that's in charge of the judicial system in Nigeria. A central authority called the NJC. They appoint judges, they discipline judges, whether they are federal or state judges. And that's why you hear that, for instance, they are in Enugu, we have state judges. But nobody from Enugu had ever complained that his political opponents use those judges against him. The reason is that there's NJC in Abuja making sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, so if we structure our police in that manner, I'll have a National Police Service Commission that helps to appoint commissioners of police for those states, just as do NJC, and then help in discipline them. And then you have at the state level the State Police Service Commission that deals with the lower academy of the police. And these commissions are populated in such a way that the, police can, the, government, the governor cannot have control over them. Then 
we are not making progress. S Senator, you know as well as I do that we have never lacked bureaucracy in this country. Mm -hmm. Even if you look at the police uh, in the current context, you'll find the Police Service Commission. Yeah. Yesterday it was the police, uh, Ministry of Police Affairs. Today it's, of course, under uh, the Ministry of Interior to some extent. Mm -hmm. uh, we've always had bureaucracy, but has bureaucracy always been able to ensure that administration is the way that it should be. I, 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 and I give you this example that's yeah. always cited. Mm -hmm. You look at the state independent electoral commissions in the mm -hmm. states, completely mm -hmm. under the purview of the state governor. What do we see? Local governments completely and totally dominated mm -hmm. by the party of the governor in that state. Yes. Now, we've seen abuses of bureaucracy. So if you establish more bureaucracy to oversee state police, is it not going to essentially share the same fate as uh, state independent electoral commissions, That's, for example? It will never happen. You see. The State Independent Electoral Commission, right? You see, there are problem. We, we, we have a problem. Instead of trying to look at the solution to problems, we run away from it. As we say, State Independent Electoral Commission, it has basically no relationship with the Independent National Electoral Commission. Mm -hmm. That's where the problem started. There's a disconnect. So that's why the governor can do whatever he wants. So if you are, for instance, a chairman of the State Independent Electoral Commission, you're not answerable to the National Electoral Commission, you have no business with them. You don't even need to use their materials if you don't want. And if you just an infraction, there's nothing I can do. Only the governor can institute and inquire into what you have done. But that does not happen in the judiciary. If you abuse your office as a state judiciary, the governor cannot save you. That's going to be the difference. We have bureaucrats that are not working. They are not working because they were not poor structured. We need to review each of those bureaucrats that's not working and they will work. That's the issue. So it's not this, that the breaker is it's not working because it wasn't structured to work from day one. Now, getting into the nuts and bolts of the proposal, yes. if, 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 when we talk about the establishment of the forces, ultimately, who is going to have the power or the control uh, over who is recruited, mm -hmm. over the, the composition of yeah. those forces when they're established? Okay, so what we are looking at is still work in progress because we're going to bring the bill. But my committee have been given responsibility to deal with that. Let me, let me tell you how we think it's going to work. We're going to have in the Constitution a provision for the establishment in states of a police service commission for the state. This police service commission will be completely independent of the governor, even though the governor is going to make impute in the appointment of the chairman. But we're expecting that bodies such as the NUJ, the uh, Human Rights uh, Community, we're expecting the Public Complaint Commission, we're expecting the, uh, uh, um, the other stakeholders to be able to make contribution by putting their representatives at that commission. At the but state. not the federal executive in any way? No, I'm coming. Okay. So at the state level. Okay. Now, this will be the responsibility to recruit policemen and discipline them, right? And then... But remember, they're going to have a police commissioner. Now, in order to make it difficult for any person to manipulate them, we expect that that state police service commission will make a recommendation to the federal police service commission, three names of those, one of which could be a police commissioner in that state. They will look at their, their, their credentials and I, I recommend for that one of them to the governor for appointment. When the governor appoints them, he still takes the name to the House of Assembly for approval. So, so I'm, going to, I'm going to let you land okay. your point. Unfortunately, we just have to take a very okay. quick break and okay. you'll conclude your thoughts. Yeah. Our viewers, please do stay with us.